Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. No to Satan. 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 Yes to Jesus. 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 And then my sin ne ugu ne tana tana kumbari de. Into ya nasi ta dunia ti. Yes. You are only begotten son. Mighty God, we pray for our dear brothers and sisters who are still on the way. Protect them and bring them in peace, O oh Lord, to join us. As we are going to finalize the teaching of small group development, mighty God, we pray that it's going to be wonderful and amazing and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray, O oh Lord, that I rebuke any spirit of yearn, yearning, God Almighty Father, which is trying to disperse us. I pray, God Almighty Father, any wickedness, mighty God, the devil is trying to plant in our midst so that we will not be able to hear the word of God as we involved in our teaching. I rebuke it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Anyone can share in leading a small group. Any one of you can share in leading of a small group. Number two, Jesus' view on leadership. We're going to talk about how Jesus really was leading when he was still on the earth. Right from this, the, the, you know, the apostles, he started to call them one by one. Especially the visionaries, when he called them and involved them in leadership. Okay, then number three, key qualities of a leader. You know, leadership leads by example, and we are going to see the qualities, how a leader can really manage to lead the people under his supervision. Okay, I really want you to be near. What is, what is that? What is that? Can I take a look at the people who are in the world? Can I take a look at the people who are in the world? Otherwise, as a leader also, go behind there. I don't want to be sure if I don't want to be there. I want you there, maybe. Okay, Doc. Are we there? Yes. Anyone? Great. 
Is there anyone can say it in leading a small group? Anyone? Anyone? Any man and woman? If you need children, you know we have in a cell group, even the youth, they can lead themselves. Not only that, the Sunday school can lead themselves in leadership, in a small group. So anyone can lead, small, big can lead. Woman, man, and woman can lead. Every creature can read the Bible, except animals, maybe. Okay, be sure to into the most successful small group based churches in the world discover that there is no connection between the area of a small group leaders, spiritual giftness and their success in small group growth and multiplication, home cell group explosion. That is by Joel Komaski. Joel Komaski. Komaski's research revealed that any leadership can successfully lead a small group and shown that the following factors have little to do with effectiveness as a leader. Number one, area of giftness. What is your area of goodness? Number two, personality type. Number three, gender. And number four is age. And number five, marital status. And number six is occupation. You see, in all those things, it doesn't matter. <coughs> in the area of give, your giftedness, a lot of people are different, you know, they have different gifts and they can really put that into consideration. The personality type, there's no problem about that. You can have your character in a different way, but still you can really lead a group. The gender, it doesn't matter whether you're a woman or you're a man, so all of us can lead. That's why, you know, Jesus Christ simply said, all of us are priesthood. He never said men and men only can be priests, but he said all of us, which means include women. That's why we need not to sanction women to become pastors. No way. No way. They are entitled. They are. Okay, the age. As I said, Sunday school may have their own cell group. The teenagers may have their own cell group. The youth may have their cell group. And even men and women it can be a mixed cell group or it can be a separate cell group. Woman cell group can be alone and men cell group can be alone and both genders can be in one cell group. Doesn't know, it doesn't matter. When we come to marital status, some people maybe say more married couples can also be mixed group or can be separate. Married man alone and married woman alone, and it can be a mixed group. Marriage man and woman can be in a cell group. It depends how. <laughs> the occupational. That's why I say all of you here with different ranges in the military, when we come in a leading in church leadership, I'm telling you, you are one. The high range to the lower range, you are one in Jesus Christ's presence to become a leader of the church. You are one. Anyway, within the church itself, we have some other level also. That's why we have a bishop, we have the divinity bishop, we have auxiliary bishop, we have the reverend, we have the pastors, we have the deacons, and we have the lay leader, and we have all those kind of gifting. There's no problem. But when we come, all of us are ministers. Whoever preached the gospel is a minister. Amen? It's very important that we put into consideration. It simply say, history has shown that who you are as a leader matters more than what you can do. Who you are as a leader is matter than for what you can do. That's very important. Everyone, every leader can put that in his mind or in her mind. Biblical views on leadership. Jesus says about leadership. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. Are you ready for that? Because that is what Jesus says all about. You want to become a great leader? Be the servant of all. Then you will become. And whoever wants to be the first must be the slave of all. Can you imagine this one bar? More than that, be a slave of everybody that you want to. And you will become the first tomorrow. That is what Jesus says. Amen. For even I, the son of man, come here not to be safe, but to save others. And to give my life as a ransom for many. We found this in Mark. The Gospel of Mark 10, 30, uh, 43 to 45. You know, when we talk about leadership, people be, be, be very sensitive. Leadership is always very important, but you'll be always an example. You see, your appearance alone can tell how your leadership you can be. Your involvement alone can draw the attention of many people and simply say, wow, this, this guy deserves to become that way. Not only by what, but they will start praying for you so that you succeed through your leadership tomorrow. Humility is one of the best, and that is most important. We will find it ahead. And Paul understands the Lord's view on leadership with those words. That's what apostles was on the earth. He eat with his apostles. 
He drink with them. He walk with them. He do the best as he can with them. His motive was so that those people can really understand and agree what about his leadership. All right. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God sometimes something to be grasped? You know, when, when Apostle Paul was taking it, Jesus said, Jesus himself is God. He's the son of the living God. But still, because God the Father is his father, he cannot really want to become like him at least. No. He knows always there is a gap between him and the Father. But they always agree. They always have understanding of agreement. So that's very important that things has to be done. That's why Apostle Paul says, every single one of us become a leader. At least we have to become like Jesus Christ. We have to become. He never ever even said we are one with the Father. Whatever God said, we are one in the Trinity. But still, that is that kind of level. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, okay, they are all one, but still that respect is given to them. I did not consider equality with God something, okay, something to be grasped. So we need to grasp that example from Jesus Christ. Whoever in the authority, we need to give that consideration to him or her. Okay, we don't want to compare whatever we are, but we don't want to compare to that. So we're supposed to take it. But made himself nothing. Jesus made himself nothing, completely zero. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. We find this in Philippians 2, 5 to 7. Jesus was really walking on the earth among us. He was serving. He was the feet of his disciples. And he was really humbling himself. And he wants everyone among his disciples to really picture up, to capture up what Jesus Christ was doing unto them. That's why I say small group leadership is about being a humble servant, not an authoritative head. You know, I hate this one always. Even in my church, when sometimes I preach, you know, don't use your position to overlook others. <coughs> no, this is not leadership. This is not. Maybe submission to the authority, okay. But I'm telling you, humility is the best of us. Especially when we talk about church leadership. You have to humble yourself, or otherwise, no way. Humility is the best. Humility is the best so far, and it's very important. Okay, it is true leadership is about service. That every member of a small group can share in the leadership of this group. Small group members should, be, should see themselves as developing leaders. You know, when you are leading a self group, you have to make sure that you are trying to develop other leaders tomorrow. Other leaders tomorrow. Don't only concentrate on me, you need to. Okay. Other leaders tomorrow is very important. It's very, very, very important. And mostly, if you are a leader in a self group tomorrow, if you don't want to raise up leaders, then you have a problem. Because if you don't mentor leaders today, you will not have a leader tomorrow. If you don't develop leadership from today by impacting what you have, to the members you are teaching about, then you will not have a leader tomorrow. So very important, make sure that you have to mentor and try to have the spirit of discernment to discover every gift from the members you are leading so that you mentor them, empower them for tomorrow grows. When the church gets expanded, when a small group gets expanded, you have to plan that, okay, then the division, not even division, but the boss, this very, men, this very group have to give one, have to give boss to another group, which is a daughter group, and which you have already meant a lot of leaders, then you will commission one of them unto that leadership. We need to really, really raise up leaders. Number four, a firm trust in the authority of, God, of the word of God, we find this in the Gospel of John 8, 31. Number five, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we find in Acts of Apostle 1, 8. Number six, prayerful, the First Thessalonians 5, 17 to 18. Number seven, has a little that reflect the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Number eight, has a, po a positive attitude and, and is totally dependent on God for wisdom and strength. We find it in Philippians 4, 13. Number nine, purposes in holiness, the First Thessalonians 4, 4, 3 to 7. Number 10, regularly encourage his or her members. We find in Hebrew 10, 25. Number 11, decide, discipline and diligence to do what it is necessary to foster growth. We find it in the first Corinthians 9, 24. 24 to 27. Number 12, 
He has the heart for witness. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. In number 13 is fast enough. That is very, very important. Fast enough. And now we want to describe to you fast enough. Every word has a meaning. Fast. F say faithful. You as a leader, you have to be very, very, very faithful. We find it in Luke 16, 10. Numbers, the second alphabet is available. You need to be available all the time as a leader. We find it in the second Timothy 4, 2. Number C, which is uh, alphabet S, seven hearted. We find it in Mark 10, 42 to 45. And the last alphabet is T, teachable. We find it in Proverbs 9, 8 to 10. We have to have all this quality as a leader, or otherwise, if you are not fast, you have a problem. You need to be fast. You need to be faithful. You need to be available. You need to be servant hearted. And you need to be a teachable servant. All those gifts, all those qualities, as a leader, you need to grab them and put into existence. Number 14, also weak, is willing to say yes to the Lord. Even if you are weak, just come before the Lord and say, yes, here I am. I am always available, or commission, or send me. That is a quality of a leader. We found it in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Weakness is not a disqualification from godly service. No, that's not. You can be weak the way people look unto you. But you are very important in God's presence. Whatever he wants to commission you to do something. Paul said, if I must boast, if I must boast, I will write a boast about the things that show how weak he is. That is the Apostle Paul. How weak I am. We found this in 2 Corinthians 11.30. And Jesus said, my power works best in your weakness. That was Jesus himself. You know, when you're very strong and you need nothing, then you need not to have Jesus even. Because say, Jesus simply said, he come in order to save all the mankind. All of us were sinners. And he simply said his power work more powerful, especially to weak person. He will make it possible to make it the way he wanted it to become. Jesus said, my power works best in your weakness. The second Corinthians 12, 9a. And willingness is mandatory for godly service. Willingness. You have to be a willing person or a willing leader to do the best as you can. You know, sometimes don't use that word. I can, maybe, maybe, you know, the so-called maybe, no. Normal say, yes, I can. That is, that is a willingness, a spirit unto you. You need to put into existence. We go to Isaiah. Isaiah say, then I heard the Lord ask you, whom should I send as a messenger to my people? Who will go for us? And I say, Lord, I go, send me. I'm telling you that the spirit of Isaiah is supposed to be to every, every, every leader. Always willing to go extra miles. Always willing to go in situation. I always put an example to uh, this young lady of ours, Reverend Rebecca. You know, with all the weakness he has, with all the pain he has, with all the physical pain he has, she was willing to come with her knee or uh, one of her muscles was not all that strong. With the death of the sister, young lady Rebecca managed to stay in a teaching and he said, well, my, for mine, for me myself, I put in the consideration because the Bible says when we want go to ecclesiastics, the Bible is very clear. Somebody goes already alas, has nothing to do with the mankind who is still alive. And simply say, all men and women, that is the Lord's work. Okay, then I will consider where to see where I can really go and fish it and comfort my dear brothers and sisters. Not because the man, the sister is passed away. Maybe the children. Maybe the children. Maybe the, uh, the husband. Maybe every family member. That Rebecca will go and encourage them, but not because she moon of that. You know, for us as Christians, we need not to moon. Sometimes, yes, the Bible says moon with those who are mourning and cry with those who are crying. And we have only three steps. The first day, the second day, the third day. The first day, no, we are celebrating. Why? Because Jesus died and stayed in the tomb only for two days, maybe some hours. And the third day, he resurrected. So as Christians, we moon somebody for three days. How does this sound? <coughs> Latuko put it that way. I took on the first day if a, if a woman died. Four days. for women, but for a man it's three days. Three days. The first day, the second day, the fourth day, the last. Three days. 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 Three days
No one's mooning over that. Maybe the family will moon it, but the whole entire community, they don't moon anymore. They are putting it. By the way, the cultures of South Sudan, they, are, they have that kind of spirit in a godly way. You see, how do they know? Even in Latuko, when you kill somebody, they don't kill you. I asked one day, I said, why don't you? Said, no, we want him. If a man kill a woman, then we will give a, a man to that family so that he bring that food onto the family. If a woman, the same thing. I say to him, why don't you? Why don't you? He goes, no, we don't kill because we don't create mankind. I was really very loving. How do they know about it? The, the because when they kill and this kill, which means we lost. We lost so we want to profit out of it. Yeah. And that is a very good culture. We have a lot of cultures in South Sudan. They have the same picture that God, in a godly picture, in a godly way. So it's very important that we put into consideration. So every pastor should be willing to do God's will. Every pastor should always say yes to everything godly, whatever they want to give. With all the pain you have. The sister died. That is a very big pain. But they say no to that pain, yes to God. Amen. Her feet was broken, she was just coming with struggle. He come on, she come on foot where you are, where she is. And they say, well, for this pain, I don't, don't fear always what kill the body, but fear what kill both body and what? And soul. That's and so, so that's very important that we put into consideration. Character of a leader. The character is the most important quality of seven leaders. If you don't have a character, you're not a leader. Sort of saying this, but I have to be open to you because that is something we are teaching about God's work. If you don't have a character, please try to readjust your <coughs> understanding and your character. Go back before the Lord and ask that he should give you a character. In the first Timothy 3, 1, 7, list qualities of a pastor. Notice that all the 15 qualities listed, only one deals with something he or she does. Being able to teach. All the other attributes deal with the pastor's character. Those leaders' character is more important than his or her scale. God is more concerned about who we are than what we do. That is always God. What we, who we are, he really more care than what we do. Okay, you can be something else. You do a lot of things, but you don't become who you are exactly. God doesn't care about what you have done. Because he is more concerned about who you are, first of all, before you do what you're doing. What you're doing. So it's very important. Why do some Christian leaders fail in their ministry? That's the question. Why do you sometimes fail in your ministry that you commission? Sadly, they lack boundaries for appropriate and appropriate behavior. If we don't have behaviors, we have a very big problem. We will consider just the character areas. Sexual purity. The Bible says some leaders fail in the area of sexual purity. Not because of ignorance of what the Bible teaches, but because of failure to place adequate boundaries in their life to safeguard them from sin. Consider the following guidelines for safeguarding sexual purity. A. Never visit alone the home of someone of the opposite sex when they are alone. Do you got that? Yeah. Don't visit an opposite sex if she's alone at home. If it is very important that you want to visit that opposite sex, one or two. Because you will have that shame if the devil is trying to graft your understanding to involve in what you are not supposed to. Human being, remember this, human being are weak sometimes. And we fell short of God's glory in a very simple way. But we will regret when we involve in it. That's why it's very important. Be very careful to visit an opposite sex home without, we've seen this a lot. Number, number B, maintain complete purity in all counseling. Check your thoughts. Jesus said, when your heart is moved to a woman, in a different way, you have already involved in adultery with that woman or with that man. That's why your thought has to be very, very, very clearly check them. You know, sometimes you, as a human being, you may have, if you discover that you have gone, please kneel down and ask for forgiveness and pray that God guide you in the right way. Place the cross of Jesus Christ to divide you with that negative thought. 
completely and declare the blood of Jesus Christ to sanctify you. As a human, of course, your eyes can take you somewhere else. But once you feel that it's trying to, from that scene, taking you somewhere else, try to say, God, have mercy on me, forgive me. Allah tool, ask for forgiveness and declare the blood of Jesus Christ as a human being. See, God carefully the nature of books, music, TV programs, internet sites, and act that influence your life. If you're not very careful, sometimes in the internet, young men, like that young man over there, and some of you here, maybe who are involved in it, including myself, okay, sometimes very bad books that we are reading, maybe sex, you know, kind of books, or uh, they may be naked, there are so many, so many, of course. This pornography, we found it in the United States a lot, the Western world. I'm not surprised in the Western world why man, man to man and woman to woman. I don't, I'm not really surprised. Why? Because they are always in that. They have that kind of freedom. But I'm telling you, you need to control yourself. There are always a lot of magazines with naked men and women. And those, if you are watching those on that one, will move your heart, you involved in a sin. Okay? That's number one. Number two, the music. You know, be very careful with the songs that you're hearing. We don't, you don't know the meaning. You don't know the meaning. That song may sound in a different way, even if you don't know, but in the spirit, you are sinning. You are committing a sin. You see, especially the Ningala music, you know, because we know Zairians are always, you know, they kind of love his people. There are so many songs maybe singing about something and you are rejoicing also involving them, then you are hearing a problem. So you have to be very careful about the songs. Songs, songs to songs. For, for you pastors, I really appreciate don't get an any worldly kind of song, but in every nature of an ethnic group, no problem. Okay, sing songs that praises the Lord. Only church songs. Or even a traditional song, but a meaningful way. You know, some songs also in a tradition is not okay. Especially there is a song in Latuka, and I really repeat it for those who understand, because that is the language I remember when we were very small. You see, I will sing you a song. And they're even repeating a very bad song in a Sunday. Can you imagine that I'm going to engage one of the ladies in one of the bars in on Sunday? Can you imagine how, how influence is it? Why only Sunday the, the day that people watch it? It's a very dirty girl. You know, those kind of songs, we, we sing and we enjoy, we dance, we don't. But some know the meaning, but because they are far away from the word of God. You cannot sing. You know, that's, I, when I sing, when, when I try to reform myself when, when we were teenagers and we were still in the world, ah, moved me a lot. That's why you have to be very careful about those songs. <laughs> sing songs that is God's name, or otherwise you're involved in <laughs> Okay, we go to the internet. Internet sometimes is Facebook. I'm telling you, there's a dirty game sometimes. Sometimes I hate it. You will find even in my in my wall, in my page, they will post a pornography photo there. A naked lady, a naked man, they will post in the internet. I'm telling you, sometimes you don't feel it. But when you found, you found that somebody have already downloaded something very bad onto your sites. So you have to be very careful. When you see that, please. Remember, every sex, outside marriage is an adultery. Sometimes we get married traditional, but we need to endorse that marriage officially in a godly manner. That's why I ask, I say, how many of you who got married in the church? How many of you who doesn't get married in the church? If you are there, then one day we pray and we get a teaching about that, then that kind of marriage can be unified. If it's 10 people, if it's 20 people, couples are there, why not? Because we want to endorse and finalize that this is the final matrimony for men and women joining together. That is that. And this one will prevent you to go to another place. Will prevent you, your eyes to go extra miles for another woman. Pologamy, that's what we have a lot in South Sudan. That was a story one of the guys talked yesterday. He, you know, they wanted to raise that young man, but he said, no, I'm sorry, you cannot raise me. I've already involved in pornography. I got married to wife. Where is the one? Who I don't bother what the girl did. He sees us in a resume. Like in the high jagal la anama wakin, like in kere zole resume sa leana zole like in the one. Telling you that is a good Whatsoever you are not a pastor, that's holy matrimony is boning you. You are bound with marriage. That's what the Bible said. Jesus said, even if one of your partner died, and he always encouraged the widows or the widower, 
If you are still young, okay. If you know that you cannot play, please get married. Okay, if you know you cannot control yourself to grow up the children you have, please, you have the right to get married. Or otherwise, the same thing to a widow, man. If you say you can, okay, if you cannot, please get married. Because if you can, you will get here tomorrow, here tomorrow, here, there, here, here, then you have a problem. But you better get married. And, and only once your, one of your partner passed away, whether it's posed from a male, a male or a female, or otherwise, no. For what you're saying now, some people say, well, I just get out from priesthood or from priesthood so that I get married again. No, no, no. You are bound. And that's why I say, who among you never received holy matrimony, you can do that. And you can really do that. Because, you know, holy matrimony make a bondage. It bounds you not to go and not to sing anywhere else. But if you don't have, if you don't receive holy matrimony, that is the same way tomorrow we'll simply say, I'm retired. I don't want to become a, peace, a pastor or a priest. Why? Because I want to get married. Why? Because the first marriage was only relationship, was ever endorsed by God, but was not blessed in holy matrimony, then he's free to choose whatever he wants to do. So we have to be very sensitive in this area. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Preach about it. Polygamy. You know, it's not all right. I know, I know in Sudan there's a lot, not only in the whole of Africa, because they need to have women. I don't know why. They want to expand Gali Nazu, Nazu Wasa, Osra. La 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 la, Hali Osra, let Wasa be besida. You see, Abraham, only Isaac, fill the whole nation. Ab only Isaac. That's one was God counting that one only. He held to Abraham, Tan Minuswana, Tan in there. He doesn't consider, even Ismail. Ismail, the firstborn of Abraham? God say no. He will not inherit. What? And he also said he will be the leader of 12 tribes and he will be hated. <laughs> God says so. Yeah. He will be hated yeah. from his Islam. He will be always an enemy. But I will establish the covenant. There's no problem about that. But who is holding that covenant is Isaac. 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 It's Isaac through, uh, through Sarah. You see. So we have to be very careful. Yes, somebody was raising a hand. Yes, yeah. sure. He has a little the culture, Saban, culture with a Denka. No. The bull is a kind of few widow. Mara. Rajira Mat. Aye. But you be a result when the condition of Bugulu Yan bit at the Zulda. Aye. Bukalusak is empty. No, but no, not better. You know, not empty feature. Can it have a good luck? Can it do with an economy? Rabbi Yard. I give you a look at our robot. Or at least a good one. I know there is one thing we have to understand. Oh, fell and fell and said it. Oh, it's a no fee. Abdel Gadim in the Old Testament. That thing was there. By the way, it's not our culture, but it's the culture of Jews. Yeah, that is. And remember, remember God say, even you the Kushay, are you not the Jews, my people? So we have the same culture as the Jews. Okay? Yes, God yeah. considered us all one. Yeah. That was in the Old Testament. Okay, the Old Testament, you know, even King David was having a lot of concubines. Maybe more than five, five, <laughs> 500 concubines. Okay? 3,000, okay? He, he, was, he was having a lot of concubines. But did he stop, not as Solomon, but did he stop in all what God had given to him? No! Still, he was really in need of the wife of Oriya. <laughs> Can you imagine with all this? Listen, can I ask you, Mother Toria? And from that mandatory, and then God tried to rebuke him. Yahuzaman Dagda, he started writing the Psalms. Allah. And we are terrible like him. He confessed. And from that mistake, he never made any mistake anymore. But when Jesus came, he closed this. One to one. The Mandakjana and Gutolo Mandakjana must stay like this. Example is for me. When I got married to my wife, oh, he doesn't give oh, MC Victor, oh, no, God, no, I'm so My mom was not very happy. Okay, this is one of my testimonies. La zo ju mara, zo ju ma kurusta ya na zo ju leta mara san ola diyar. Butolo mara net bujo lumunu. Lana, this is my choice. Nasib of tay jamin khortum la hadi fi master gaid mana situ shur. Ya saturnino zo ju mara tay na san ola diyar. Butolo, this is my wife. Be yal anu. Fishu alba san salto. Butolo, according to my understanding, based on the Bible, men and women are helping God in creating mankind. Hannah, the mother of Samuel. 
the son Samuel that she, she takes and dedicated. It's 12, 12 years. It is 12 years. Just go back to the Bible. It's very, very important. It's 12 years. But my wife stayed 17 years. So she's more than even Hannah. Praise the Lord. She's even more than Hannah. So that is that. We need to be very careful. The internet sites and act that influence your life. You see, there is a lot of jokes that we don't want that can really influence, especially I go back to my Latuka, because Latuka is where the culture can really put an example. There's some, you know, when a, a brother of Uglo uh, Ebarabu, Hamati, what's the name? Very dirty garment is very useless. This is a sin. Yeah, this woman is mine, and no one will touch except I alone. Very stupid, and it's not required. In every culture, it's very bad. Mara I hate it. And all of you should hate that. It's not okay. It's a sin. You turn from that, that, that. Tomorrow you find that sin. But you're a human being. Yes. Yes. Then after pregnancy, you know, a lot of things happen like that in so many societies of ours. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, of course, he has to be <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Paul told Timothy to set an example for believers in a speech. As a, you know, that was one Paul, Apostle Paul was, you know, instructing, instructing who? Instructing Timothy to be an example for believers. Live a godly life, live a godly way. As we read before that, be exactly like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ until he goes. He never sinned. Different sins are kind of things that we are talking about. He was an example to all until he goes. Until he goes. So we need to set an example like that. Financial integrity. And that's one of the things. Understand here very well. This is something that's failing a lot of leaders. The way we handle money indicates how disciplined we can in general. The way we handle money is really giving a very big indication in general. Consider this. Guidelines in financial integrity. A. Pay your bills. Remember the feet on a cake. This guy, I don't know what to say, but not like. You know, sometimes when, uh, I, I, I found a question in how to pay your transportation, and I managed to reduce a little bit. The most worried person is he always wanted. He and when a promise is there, he needs to fulfill that promise. You know, last time I was shortcut and I don't have money. And the woman needs money. And I told him, it's okay, but I have shortage. He said, okay. He never said anything. I'm telling you from his own amount of money, 3,000 something, he paid to them. As a leader. See, practice tithing and sacrificial giving. God says, it is more blessed to give them than to receive. That was Jesus' statement in Acts of Apostle. Yes, 2035. I think we are talking about the titan. Are you titan? This means we should be devoted to prayer, God's word, consistent in living out of our faith, loving and forgiving others to the best of our ability in his strength. The most important thing is, as pastors as, or as leaders, don't hold your brother or your sister or your relative in your heart that really hurted you. You need not to. It's very important. Please be a forgiving person. Always forgive in situations. We are not perfect. We are learners to really to become like Jesus Christ. So when your brother and sister you know, hard at you in every way of another, please pray that may God forgive them. And go to him face to face and tell what you've done is not okay, but I forgive you from the top of my heart. That is the heart of a leader. Always. Okay, the next. Furthermore, it means we are honest with ourselves in our our areas of weaknesses and where we need improvement. We can 
we can call these goals at work, areas in our lives. Our life must be consistent with the calling we have received. Transparent living is essential and powerful in leadership. We can lead only up to where we are in our walk with the Lord. We must always be honest and up, up front before the Lord and others about our mistake. We must be real. They fall into one of two broad categories of a confidence or lacking confidence. One of the two. Attitude is a choice. Attitude we have is the attitude we have chosen. The wrong attitude. Some people fail to become better leaders because of a wrong attitude. They fail into one or two wrong categories of a confidence or lacking confidence. When we have a lot, starting from the bishops, the auxiliary bishops, involving the reverends and senior pastors, they are there holding position, but they don't know they are failing because of the pride they have. Number one is they offer confidence, produce pride a sense of superiority and organs. This may cause a person to act hostily, come on too strong and head off in the wrong directions. Number two, lacking confidence, produce negative responses, fear, doubt, confusion, disbelief, and lack of leadership. Intimidated by fear or failing and and falling short of expectations. The right attitude. The well-balanced leader seeks to develop a good self-image as Christ's minister. Depending solely on the quiet confidence and assurance that comes from trusting in the Lord and following his ways. We find this in Proverbs 3, 5-6. When considered from a human perspective, a sense of weakness and inadequacy should come over every, everyone when they consider the list of leader qualities that have been mentioned. Thankfully, the Lord does not expect us to lead in our own strength. Paul declared. Attention from here. And I go right on Kolomara. You know, don't increase any strength apart from what you're given by the Lord. This is what Paul says. It is not that we think we can do anything of lasting value by ourselves. Our only power and success come from God. The second Corinthians 3 5. The strength you're given to do God's work is what you want to apply. Don't add yours. Or otherwise you'll keep on failing backward. So what is good lacking for in a leader? The eyes of the Lord search the whole heart in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. The second Corinthians 16, 9. Listen, the Lord is not scanning the horizon for seminary students or those who see themselves as lone rangers, spiritual giants. He delight to call those who are weak, those who are sincerely loyal to him, those who are willing to be used by him. The Lord is the ability of our availability. Availability, our part is to avail ourselves to him. Are you willing? That's a question to all of you. Are you willing to avail? Are you willing to avail? Everyone has potential. So what is your situation? Are you weak? But through your weakness, Jesus said, he will do the best as he can. And Apostle Paul said, I will be proud from what I receive from Christ himself. Sure, there are lots of reasons why God doesn't choose you for leadership. But you were deeply committed to him. If you are willing to trust him, he will use you in spite of who you are, what is in your past how you feel, and what you think about yourself. Scan your eyes. We are now coming to see how far have we fallen. 
And of course, when we tell a lot of, a lot of testimonies, people will talk a lot, will explain. Yesterday, we hear a lot of testimonies. We hear from Pastor Rebecca, and it was, and she was coming with open heart. He said, if there is a sin that I've committed, I'm telling you, I will be thrown to the fire because of one, two, three, four, five. But I pray that God forgive me for that. And I'm telling you, she has already been forgiven in advance. That's why he says, scan your eyes down the list of biblical char characters on the following pages. The Lord used the amazing ways. There's so many people we are going to read about them, whom God used with all their weaknesses, and they managed to be used by him to accomplish the mission. They too had their share of excuses as to say, as to why the Lord should not have chosen them for leadership. Now we go to number one. Noah was a drunkard. Noah got drunk. But God uses Noah to save the people during those times, to build an ark. And tell that God uses him to save the Israelites from the Egyptians, from Pharaoh. And managed to lead them all the way from Egypt to the promised land. Whatever he never reached to the promised land, but he commissioned Joshua, whom he named from Messiah to Joshua, and he said, please go ahead and take the people. Gideon and Thomas doped, both doubted God. Thomas said, are you really Jesus? Can I fit? Can I put my finger to your wound? He doubted. <laughs> Gideon, when God say, well, send other people back. I want you to choose only few. And you're going to win. He also doubted God. But God still uses them. Samson was a womanizer. Samson was a womanizer, but at last God also uses him. Noami was a widow. He saved the Israelites. David was too small for a king's short armor. But he managed to lead the Israelites as a king. He was appointed when he was very young. But still God appointed him and used him in future. He managed to destroy Goliath, not with the armor, because the armor was very heavy for him to carry, but he got with a slug only, a stone. He killed Goliath. The same David had an affair. The affair is with the wife of Oriah. He chose the wife of Oriah. He has two things. One, one he committed adultery to someone wife. And number two, when Uriah came and he doesn't want to go and lay with the wife, because that wife was under pregnancy, then he said, this guy has to be finished. And he sent him, go to the front line. And he told, he struck the other guy. This young man I put in the front line, so that the best bullet will kill him. And he died, because David has an affair of two sins. He commit murder and he commit adultery. But still God uses him. So David and Moses were murderers. That's why I fulfilled that one. Moses, of course, killed an, an, an Egyptian and he buried on the sun. Saul also, the, but still God uses them. Elijah and Jeremiah become depressed and suicidal. They want to commit suicide. But still God allowed them. Hosea's wife was a prostitute. And still God used Josiah and the wife as a prostitute he used to. He used the wife in order to save the Israelites who were strong by hiding them. <coughs> but still God uses to protect whom have already chosen. Amos only training with the school of big three pruning. But still God uses. Jonah ran from God to Nineveh. When he was assigned to go to Nineveh, he direct. And God causes, you know, the steamer to overshake him. So that he was realized that he is somebody who is not submitting to God, he said. And then the people in the sea throw him to the lake. So that they don't want to. And at last God take a very big shark come and swallow him. After three days, he was there and he was commissioned to go again. You may be planning to run away. You may be having some other problem that you don't want to involve in it, but God said, no, I've chosen you, I'm going to use you. Peter denied knowing Jesus three times until the cock broke. But yes, Jesus 
still, it's still the same feature as Jesus saying, in this rock, I will build my church. And today, the so-called church was what Jesus prophesied, that through Peter, that's what the Roman Catholic Church is established. The Roman Catholic Church is established. Today we have Pope Paul. It is the connection of... And you know sometimes I used to give a question mark. The first man that Jesus has chosen to become, that established the church on it, okay, as the Roman Church, the Catholic Church are still following, he was married. Then why are we not allowing our priests to get married? It's a very big question mark. I remember Jesus visited him and found the mother law of Peter was sick. He healed her. That is the proof. The Roman Catholic Church today is stationed on Apostle Peter, whom Jesus said, In this rock I will establish my, <coughs> my church. With all the denial that he denied Jesus, of course. But Jesus said, Well, I will make use of him. There's no problem at all. Martha was a warrior. Come and tell me you don't want to ordain ladies as pastors. Did I see Martha here? She was a warrior. She, she was a warrior. She fought so much. He did, demonstrated so much. And he did a lot. And God uses her. Now we have Martha and we have who? We have Naomi there. These are the ladies that God used. Lazarus was dead. But yet God raised, her, raised him back to, to life. And Paul persecuted the church. Apostle Paul killed the church. Apostle Paul killed the church. Apostle, the same Apostle Paul who said, no woman supposed to preach. And again on the other side he said, if women are preaching, let them cover their heads. Yes. I don't know which is which now here, Paul. And at last, what I see is genius of women. I can see on the other side. The problem is, why, does, does, why didn't he get married? Why? It's because he has really persecuted the church and he's, he say, I'm going to pay a price because Jesus Christ said, no, this guy is going to pay a price. The price he's paying is dedicating himself to, to, to save God. He doesn't want to have a family because a lot of family members withdraw his attention from committing one way. That's why he chose not to marry, but to do God's will until he goes. That was the choice. And he even gave advice to people, please, if you want to be like me, take a decision. If not, please get married to one wife. Just one, don't want more than one. Alanda has a soldier in the You know, all we see, those things are there. So, what is your excuses? You don't want to be used by God. What is your excuse? Can you, can you see all the people from Old Testament to the New Testament who are still used by God with all their wings? You see, we need not to uh, to draw our attention mark a little bit far away by excuses. I don't do this because I'm this. I don't do that because I'm that. I'm telling you, if a calling is yours, whichever week you are, the Lord still will use you. Think about it. The Lord knows what he is doing. He has chosen to walk through human agents like you and me. He never make mistake. And you're always in a good company. The question that must be answered, will you allow the Lord to walk through you? That's a very big question. Will you allow the Lord to make use of you? Will you allow the Lord to walk through you? Yes. Yes. That is what is the question. Suggestion. Yes. If you are struggling with your self-image or have any doubt to, as to who you are in Christ, then look carefully at the extra reading section in this session. <coughs> Scale for leading. Maintaining right direction. You can maintain the right direction by helping to keep the focus of the group on Christ. 
throughout the life of your group, Satan will tempt the members to relax and just hang out. Groups that fall into this trap slowly lose meaning and purpose and eventually stagnate and drift apart. Be careful that the group does not wear off track and urge your members to move past their fears and to stay out of the comfort zone so that they may experience new challenges that will draw them closer in their work with the Lord. You may need to approach members carefully who try to compromise and block what God wants to do. That issue is coming because God wants to use you to go and plant a church in somewhere else. No more to know. That is, a, you know, that, that is always the nature of liberty. So it's very well to grow the church. Always see what the Spirit leads. Don't see what human talk to you. Based on the Spirit, whatever the Spirit revealed to you is what you put number one. And go ahead with it. Just let them know that this is what is taking place. Based on God's Spirit through you. Maintaining the right path. <clears throat> Every member in your group is uniquely different. They differ in gender, personality, giftedness, commitment, passion, Bible knowledge and understanding, experience, maturity, and act. Every human being, every member in the church is different from another. They have different gifting. They have different calling. So please accept them as they are. Be aware. Be a wise leader. Don't expect that everyone will be able to move forward. Learn, save, and grow. At the time and the pace, helping to keep the right pace will enable everyone to, to stay together as they tackle the many challenges in the life of a group. This is what pulling together and growing together is all about. But we work as a team. We should make that we accomplish things together, not Singularly, but in one understanding, we will accomplish what God has given to us an assignment as a team. When Jacob met his brother Esau and rode back to his to his home, this is what he said to Esau's suggestions of living. Jacob and his family, servants as livestock. You can see, my lord, that some of the children are very young. And the frogs are hips of their young, too. If they are driving too hard, they may die. So go ahead of us. We will follow at our own purpose. Look, to draw the attention of his brother based on his fear. But the brother was not having that intention. He was thinking, if they start from those, then those ones will get safe. That's why he divided his people. So you need to maintain that kind of understanding. Maintain the right path requires the foster members to slow down a little in consideration of these in the group who are slower. It is also allowed adequate time for the main parts of the meeting. Be sensitive and flexible to the needs of everyone in your group. Meetings will start and finish at the agreed time. When we say we are starting at 8 o'clock, we finish at 10 o'clock. It has to be exactly like that. Don't add or don't decrease. Time it that way. This time permit people to depart on time without embarrassment, ensuring that members will not use late finishing as an excuse for not attending. Of course, when you attend late, then tomorrow, every hour simply I cannot give you cannot be mut akhirin. I better say kangal sunum anataban. But no, I'm telling you, it's not taban. But he is fearing the delayment. <coughs> The dilemma. So we need to finish early. Start early, finish early on time, so that people has to go. We don't want to open the door of excuses because of detaining them. Sometimes being late, facing challenges, dealing with interest characters. As one of the leaders in your group, your concern is to see your members mature in the ministry and love. Philippians two one to eight. The success or failure of your group will depend upon how you respond to people who tend to disturb the harmony of the group. Such people need sensitive and loving care as you re retrain their enthusiastic or pen penitently 
redirect their thinking. We find this in Colossians 3.16. The first Thessalonians 5.14 says, Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are tempted, take tender care of those who are weak, be patient with everyone. We need to put that in a system. When forming a new group, the Lord shall be called upon to hand pick the interesting char char characters for the group. It is important to understand that the characters he chose will be for the purpose of receiving and giving ministry from each person in the group. Ministry is intended to travel in both directions. In both directions. Not only one direction, but in both directions. The first Samuel 22, 2 says, This is about the interesting characters that were chosen by God to be on David's team. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontent gathered around him and he became their leader. Consider the following list of interesting characters the Lord may choose to be in your group. Number one, the dominant character, someone who's dominant in character. Number two, the side tracker. Number three, the one who never speaks. Number four, the one who say too much. And number three, the one who always seems to offer the wrong answer. The next, the one who is of apologetic. Number seven, the one who displays a fault finding spirit. Number eight, the one who is over sensitive to minor correction. Number nine, the fearful. Number ten, the prideful. And number eleven, the intellectual. Number twelve, the negative type. Number thirteen, the one who arrives late. Number fourteen, the one who lives late. Number fifteen, the attention shaker. And number fifteen, uh, sixteen, the loner, number 17, the tumbler, and number 18, the lazy bones, the lazy bones. I think every character here is mentioned. When I see unto you, it's mentioned. Sometimes they are not there, but sometimes we have them here. And this is one of them. This is one of them. <coughs> he came late and he's enjoying his time. <laughs> he has so many characters. Him, he has so many characters. I mean, about him. He has so many characters. But I like him anyway. <laughs> he simply said, relax. It is a lucky the Lord will choose all the above interesting characters for your group. So as a leader, don't worry about it. You have all of them there. It is God who chose them to be there. The way we think about ourselves, our self-image has a big influence on, on the way we relax, to, uh, we, relate, we relate to others. If we feel good about ourselves, our relationship with others is usually good. But if we feel bad about ourselves, we often react negatively toward us. Can you imagine? Our self-image is built up, among other things, by our looks, personality, attitude, abilities, and perception of what other things of us. The way we think that this person is that way is the same thing he reflected back who you are. One self-image is developed as the awareness of our own identity begins in early childhood when we are small growing. And if the results of accepting the values other people place on our appearance, abilities, performance, and the environment in which this takes place. A negative cell image is produced in a child who is criticized, <coughs> put down in front of others, made to feel unwanted, or a nonsense, or who feels insecure in the family. Lack of discipline, indulgence in place of love, and broken homes are major contributors. The way we mistreat our children, the way we defile our children, 
the way God may bring to you to bring to grow up the children the legendary orphans. I'm quite sure uh, as a good father, you will not even say your children with the other children. But as a fa bad father always, you will put your children the first priority than the others, which is very bad. But that is a situation anyway. Because no one will love other children than his own children. This is known. They say or do. See, being over sensitive to minor criticism. D. Displaying a fault finding spirit. E. Being moody. F. Having better than others attitude. G. Being apprehensive about change. And H. Attending attention. Attention shaking. In most cases, a poor self-image can be repaired with having tender care and much affirmation. But remember that a lifetime of negative thinking takes prayer, patience, perseverance, perseverance, hard work, and time to be changed. The foundation of a healthy self-image is the acceptance of the truth that we are wonderfully made by God in His likeness. As we found in Genesis 1.27. That is our prayer. God created us from his own image and to his likeness as well. We resemble him. Jesus said, if you want to see my dad, here I am before you. As you see me, you see my father in heaven. And he created us from his own, his likeness, from his own likeness, from his own image. We resemble God the Father. That's why he loved us so much, by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who came and paid the price on the cross of Calvary. Doubts about who you are. The following biblical statement leave no doubt to as to who we are and our net worth to God. That is the character he wanted us to become. I am the salt of the earth, Matthew 5.13. I am the light of the world, Matthew 5.14. I am a child of God and part of his family, John 1.12 or Roman 8.16. I am Christ's friend, John 15.15. I am a joint heir with Christ sharing his inheritance with him in Romans 8, 17. I am a temple of God. His spirit dwelt in me. The first Corinthians 3, 16 and 6, 19. I am the new creation, new person. The second Corinthians 5, 17. I am a son. Ephesians 1, 1, Philippians 1, 1 and Colossians 1, 2. I am God's workmanship created anew in Christ Jesus so that I can do the things he planned for me long ago, Ephesians 2.10. I am a citizen of heaven and seated there now, Philippians 3.20 and Ephesians 2.6. I am a chosen God, holy and dearful loved in Colossians 3.12. I am one of God's living stones being built up as a spiritual house, First Peter 2.5. I am a part of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation. A people for God's own, passionate, to proclaim His goodness. The first Peter 2, from uh, 9 to 10. I am born of God and the evil one. Satan cannot touch me. The, the first of John 5, 18. This is what God called because He created us from His own image. These are the characters that we have. This is what we call Christians. That is our Christianity phase when we look unto those characters. That is what we demonstrate a lot, that we don't fall down. That is what he came and paid a price on the cross of Calvary by shedding his blood, just to pay a price for me and you. We are all these characters whom God called us to become. Satan has nothing to do with all of you. The devil is a liar and is a father of liars. He can't come more close. But we need to prevent ourselves by daily prayers. We need to pray and intercede and say, God, here we are. Use us to become whom we want us to become. Jesus said he will not come on the earth until every person has been born again. It is your work and me to make sure that the whole universe is Christianized. They become born again. We don't want to see any paganism within the nations of this world. Even if those who say no, we are, they are who we are, they are in the different religions, 
But we say no, we have the plan too. That's why he's raising up leaders, evangelists and missionaries to reach every corner of the world. The Great Commission, May 20, 26, 28, sorry, May 28, he wants us to go all over the world to preach the gospel. You don't limit yourself to be in South Sudan. You can go to Ethiopia, you can go to Uganda, you can go to Kenya. There's so many we need to do within our nation before we go out. That's not true. I'm telling you, God is using us in Egypt. Egyptians cannot reach their people, but we are money to reach. When we go to Egyptians you now, in upper Egypt, especially in their rural areas, they gather, they love. You can find out a very big church like that will put a tent, thousands of them. And when we pray for them, God's power is over them. People are receiving healing. But when we go, you know the security they are they are African, they don't know. But they don't know we are used more than even their people. And they believe. It's and the pastors, even Dr. Iman, he believe. That was the day we fasted for 40 years. Sorry, for 40 days. I was Dr. Iman and Moses Wali is around. And we went to Upper Egypt for one week. I'm telling you, there was a daughter, a lady born, he was by that time it was 18 years old. He was born crippled. And when you ask a lady, can you, my girl, no, I'm born like that. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It takes us time to pray for this young lady, just to convince her to accept. When she accepts, automatically she was touched and she started walking. Amen. That was yes. the power. People were, what is taking place? No, 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 no. Don't surprise. It is in the Bible. Yes. Jesus said, you will do even more than I do. Yes. More than I do. So we have a bit. <coughs> we have a lot to do. Because we are commissioned. Say a good news, for I am I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. Number one, carefully read, reveal times to the gospel, track step to peace with God, or evaluate, or a, a relevant, a, equivalent. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to prompt your mind with a, with a close friend you know or suspect is not a Christian, and who may be open to hearing, reading the good news about Jesus. Number three, when this happens, make an appointment to meet with your friend for 30 to 60 minutes at a place that is free of distraction. Relay on the Holy Spirit for his perfecting timing. Number four, explain that because you care for them, there is some important news you should like to share with him or her. At this point, you need to decide to either take them through the step to peace with God's track or preventing them with the track. Importance of setting goals. We are in, uh, we are in, four, we are in session seven. Number three, importance of accountability, evaluation and structure. Preparation needed to form a new group. The preparation for forming a new group should not be a rush affair. Prayer is the place to begin if, if good health, maturity, and fruitfulness are desired for the group. Careful consideration of the following will help us to ensure a strong and a confident start in this new venture. Leadership team. A, leader, a leadership team comprising of the pastor of the group, apprentice, coach, small groups director, and the Holy Spirit, all working in collaboration with one another, should be established before the group is formally recognized by your church. You need to decide as to which particular group of people which God is leading you to minister. Women group, men group, young adults, mixed married and act. What I mean to say here, I just want to put an example. <coughs> you may be the leader of this group. And this is your apprentice. This is your assistant. <coughs> According to our teaching, always the Holy Spirit is the teacher. 
is always in the middle, as you see from this here. <coughs> this is the Holy Spirit in the center. In this area, you are going to be an apprentice, you know, uh, what? You are trying to make every possible mean that you will support this young man. This is your assistant. Okay, when the group is 12, that is maximum. Then now you are trying to see how you can multiply this group. When you multiply this group, you will leave the group of maybe six with him. <laughs> <laughs> and you go with a number of, let me say, leave you with a number of seven, and you go with a number of five. As a leader, always, you leave your assistant to do the work within the home, because he's now, you entrusted him. And to start a new beginning of a new, a new what, a new church, then you need to go with the five members to form a new church. Then remember, always you put an extra chair beside the group, praying very much that this chair will bring a visitor one day to occupy it. Amen? Amen. That is how things all. Remember, from all the members here, you will give them an assignment. There will be somebody who is greeting people and bringing people in. There will be somebody who is arranging the chairs. There will be somebody who is prefer, you know, uh, uh, taking the icebreaker. There will be somebody, all oh, we will find them there. The same thing here. <coughs> pastor Rebecca is going to be the senior pastor of this group. <laughs> and this young man is going to be an apprentice. Where are you? Yes. Always the pastor on the right and the apprentice on the second. The apprentice which means assistant pastor. And the coach. And the coach is someone who is coaching the group. He's not only coaching this group, but he's coaching the other groups as well. Let me say a catch, River and a catch is the coach of all the three groups. Okay, then we will have a director. Do you know who is the director? The director is somebody maybe who is directing my brother here is going to be the cell group pastor which is followed by his assistant apprentice as indicated remember the holy spirit is a great teacher he's not teaching but through this communicated the teaching to all now when are you trying to submit you submit to the director every year the submission is there but when we come to the real submission, that a director, no, no, not a director, sorry, the coach, 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 like a coach of a football, somebody who is coaching, coaching you. He coaches this and he coaches that, he coaches that. Mm -hmm. All these three groups belong to him. He's the one coaching. So this is how it is all about. Members, you need to decide as to, it can be a mixed group. Now we see here, it's a mixed group, all right? We have two ladies here, three, three ladies. Yes, three ladies. And here also is a mixed group. We have one lady here. Two. 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 I'm always ignoring one. Oh, yes. <laughs> According to the structure, all of those guys, starting from this young man, from here, to all of you, you are all ministers. He's a minister, he's a minister, he's, she's a minister, and all of you are ministers.